Today we're going to look at Of Mice and Men by John Steinbeck. In particular, we're going to have a bit of an author introduction, talk about the characters, and have a little bit of discussion about the themes. So John Steinbeck is one of the great American writers of the 20th century. Uh, when you consider he has written uh, The Pearl of Mice and Men, uh, The Grapes of Wrath, all of these great stories that, that we have over the several decades that he was writing, um, and the fact that he wrote not just novels, he also wrote short stories, he wrote for the stage on Broadway, he wrote lots of screenplays for Hollywood, really one of the great American writers of the 20th century, just bar none. So let's take a look a little bit at that author. Uh, John Steinbeck was born on February 27th in 1902 in Salinas, California. Now he was the third of four children and he was the only son. Now during his childhood, Steinbeck learned to appreciate his surroundings and love the Salinas countryside and the nearby Pacific Ocean. It would be this appreciation that would later come out in his writing. And then of course Steinbeck worked during his summers as a hired hand at nearby ranches around Salinas, California. Now this look at the author is quite important to his writing because nine times out of ten his stories are set where he was born and raised around the Northern California area, usually somewhere on a ranch, usually somewhere near the, uh, near the ocean, but always in California and a fairly rural type of an area in California. And so as we take a look at some of these pictures, we're taking a look at California ranches, in particular when John Steinbeck would have been alive, uh, what he would have been seeing, the people that he would have been talking to, the people he would have been working with. Uh, even as an author, he would sometime, take some time off and go off into the fields for a day or two just to get the lay of the land, just to get the feel of the workers, so he could come back and write more expressively and more realistically. Now, the beauty of Salinas, where he grew up himself, uh, California is just an absolute climate onto itself. We have the mountains, we've got the valleys, you have uh, very beautiful snow-capped uh, white snow, um, you've got the oceans where it is always quite warm, uh, they've got plenty of rain, there's other places where it does, it's almost desert-like, and so when you think of California, it's just this cosmopolitan of different climates. But in Salinas, it's a beautiful place for ranches, for farming to be, even today. And so, of course, back in Steinbeck's time, this rich farmland certainly helped create Salinas what it, as to what it was and what it is today. Now, at the age of 14, Steinbeck decided to be a writer and spent a lot of time writing in his room. Now, in high school, he did well in English, and he even edited the school yearbook. So he kind of knew almost from the start what it is he wanted to do in life. Now from 1919 to 1925, Steinbeck attended Stanford University to please his parents, but he only chose courses that interested him, like classical and British literature, writing courses, and every once in a while an odd science course to deal with you know, the, the climate and the topography of, of California, I'm sure. However, Steinbeck did not receive a degree because he would drop in and out of school, sometimes to work with migrant workers and blind, bindle stiffs in California ranches. Well, what's a bindle stiff? Well, a bindle stiff is a hobo or a migrant, somebody who carries a bedroll on their back because they're going from farm to farm every few days or every few weeks just to earn enough money to move on to the next place, just looking for enough work so they, they can survive. Now, during the late 1920s and throughout the 1930s, Steinbeck's going to concentrate on writing, and he wrote several novels that were set in California. So we see The Cup of Gold and Tortilla Flats, um, and by the time Of Mice Men comes along, he is quite the famous author. And so as he moves into another one of his great novels, East of Eden, he's now nationally, if not internationally, known. And we continue into The Moon is Down and The Winter of Our Discontent. And of course, Steinbeck gained great success by both the readers and his critics. Now in 1929, he published his first novel, Cup of Gold, and he made enough money that he felt that he could marry. And so in 1930, he married Carol, Carol Henning and they moved to his family's home. Now his father helped support the struggling couple, but unfortunately, they're going to divorce in 1942. 
Now, in 1935, he won his first literary prize, the Commonwealth Club of California Gold Medal, for his best novel by a Californian for his novel Tortilla Flat. But his big-time fame came in 1936, when Of Mice and Men was published, and it was so widely accepted that Steinbeck began a book tour that led him to Europe. Now, in 1939, The Grapes of Wrath was published and became an instant bestseller. In 1940, it was awarded the Pulitzer Prize, one of the most prestigious literary awards in the world. Now, this novel, just like Of Mice and Men, stemmed from his experience working among migrant workers. Now, Steinbeck's experiences in the fields researching migrant workers led him to have more compassion for these workers and stirred up his concern for social justice. Now, his second marriage in 1943, he married Gwendolyn Conger, who would give him two sons before their eventual divorce in 1948. And in 1943, Steinbeck worked as a war correspondent for the New York newspaper, The Herald Tribune. Now, while he was living in Monterey, California, Steinbeck said that he felt unwelcome as no one would rent him an office for writing, and he was harassed when trying to get fuel and wood from a local wartime rations board. So then he wrote that his old friends did not want to be around him, partly because of the works he was writing, and partly because he was so successful. Steinbeck once wrote, This isn't my country anymore, and it won't be until I'm dead. It makes me very sad. He left Monterey the next year and moved to New York. You have to remember, he was working among the migrant workers. He was talking to people who were relatively poor and relatively migrant. They moved from place to place. So the few people who might have enjoyed his realism in, his, in the books, he doesn't get to see. But his family members, his friends, who are not quite understanding why he's taking up their plight or what all of a sudden fame and fortune brings, they didn't quite understand him. And so he did not like the fact that they could not relate. And so he decides to move to New York and away from California. Of course, it did not last long. Remember what we said at the beginning, nine times out of ten, most of his novels are from the California countryside, and he missed it. So in 1948, he moves back to Monterey, not exactly the same city. He's, gonna try, he's still going to try California, though. And a year later, he met Elaine Scott, who in 1950 became his third wife. Although he continued to write and publish, he never felt at ease in his life and once wrote to an aspiring writer from Salinas, Don't think for a moment that you'll ever be forgiven for being what they call different. You won't. I still have not been forgiven. Only when I'm delivered in a pine box will I be considered safe. After I had written The Grapes of Wrath, the librarians at the Salinas Public Library who had known my folks remarked that it is lucky my parents were dead so they did not have to suffer this shame. Now, one of Steinbeck's two sons fought in the Vietnam War while Steinbeck himself was in Asia covering the war for Newsday, a Long Island newspaper. Now, Steinbeck lost a number of friends during the anti-war movement due, due, due to his open support of the war and to America's involvement. His sons went off to war. He himself went off to become a war correspondent, and so therefore he was seen as being, if, if there is such a word, pro-war. Um, and it was very likely during the later times of the Vietnam War that if you were seen to want the war to continue for America to try and win out in Vietnam, you probably lost a lot of friends. The anti-war movement in Vietnam was big and it was strong. Now, Steinbeck's last two books were nonfiction. He got kind of tired of people telling him that he was doing absolutely great critically, but at the same time, the people he talked to on a daily basis absolutely did not like what he was doing. So he switched over to nonfiction. Travels with Charlie in Search of America was an account of his trip from Maine to California with his poodle, Charlie. So his adventures traveling from the east all the way back home to California in the west. That is what the book is on. It is not fiction. It doesn't talk about migrant workers. It is literally him going across the United States. His final book, America and the Americans, was about his belief that in time, America would once again feel united. John Steinbeck died on December 20th, 1968 at his apartment in New York City, and his wife took him home to Salinas to be buried near the land that he spent his life writing about.
So when we actually go to Salinas, California, the place where he was born and raised and the place where he felt uncomfortable with the people, now you actually have a National Steinbeck Center where people can go and celebrate his writings and his work. And you're looking at the mural that overlooks the National Steinbeck Center in Salinas, California. But we are here to start working on Of Mice and Men, and that is actually what I'm going to continue doing in the next video. Uh, thank you so much for stopping by. If you like what you see, please leave a comment down in the section and tell me what else you would like to hear. Um, and I'd appreciate it if you'd subscribe to the channel. Thanks for stopping by.